you know, we used to experience the world through our hands and our eyes and our noses, and now fundamentally we experience and, and search for um, search for content with our fingers on a screen. Um, we used to. Um, I spent my youth going to record stores, um, looking for tapes and records and CDs. This is the record store that I used to go to. Um, this, all these images were grabbed from uh, from Google Images, so um, I've gotten really good at that as well. But um, by the time the store finally closed, it was not the record exchange, and I actually clipped a little um, price tag from a record that I bought when the store was called the Record Exchange. By the time it went out of business. It was about uh, games and CDs, not at all about records. But you'd go into that store and you'd see people like this, and they'd tell you what to buy and tell you how uncool you were for buying the record that you just bought. And then you would spend hours flipping through bins of records and CDs and cassettes. I live in San Francisco, so this place is still there. Um, if you live in LA, there's an Amoeba Records there. Um, and there's also one in Berkeley. It's probably the most incredible archive of physical music still in existence today. You walk into the store and it looks like that. It was a former bowling alley. You can literally buy any form of media, including eight track tapes in the store. It's actually still doing quite well, but there's really only a few of these relics left. Um, then you would go home, or I would go home, and I would do something like this. I would throw all these records on the floor, and I would you know, rapidly go through this stuff, and I'd be looking for the diamond in the rough, and my hands would smell like records, and um, you know, there'd be bags um, and kind of the physical remnants of someone else's life that I had picked up through, um, you know, leafing through the, the bins of records. Um, now I do this. I log on. I pick a couple of songs. I might go there and download stuff, which I'll, I'll then drag over to a portable device. But I don't flip through uh, the liner notes. I don't look at the art anymore. Um, I literally look very hard, get a ton of data, download the stuff in kind of a sterile world, and then um, listen to it through headphones, not on my floor thinking about lots of things, but on a plane traveling through the airport. So this isn't a bad thing, but it's a completely different experience. It's the end of physicality. A lot of people um, increasingly listen to Pandora online, and you know, unlike having to take a record, put it, put it on a turntable and flip it every 20 minutes, Pandora will play and play and play and play, It'll play music that you kind of like because it kind of knows you, but it's not very proactive. So again, screens and your fingers, there's nothing tactile about this experience at all. However, um, you have access to you know, infinite content um, very quickly. So what I'm going to talk about is going beyond three screens. So right now, when we are looking at, uh, where am I pointing this thing, by the way? There we go. See, there we go. Right now, we're thinking of three screens. You think of television, online, and mobile, right? And more and more, we're seeing people planning media across these three screens. But how many of you have electronic reading devices or notebooks or uh, gaming devices? So we're well beyond three screens. Today, we have other devices. Gaming devices are becoming these multimedia devices. You have portable reading devices like the, the Kindle devices and the iPads. So right now, I would say that today we are in a more of a six screen type of environment. But what happens when we move to multiple screens? And I'm going to get into some of the new types of screens that are emerging. What's happening is that technology is moving really fast. And in today's six screen environments, we're just at the starting point of where we're going to be in the next few years as we start getting into multiple screens and multiple platforms. At the crux of this is what Colin was talking about, this connected experience. 75% of consumers say that they actually want to access similar content across different screens. So being able to deliver that content and those messages that people are looking for, regardless of what screen they're accessing, is going to become king and paramount in this multi-screen type of experience. 